NASCAR issued fines to Ross Chastain, Austin, Dillon, and Bubba Wallace, as well as their crew chief spotters and team executives for engaging in race manipulation on Sunday night at Martinsville Speedway. Roll this up over at StockCarReport.com. You can find the link in the description below. Anyone who watched the race noticed that this race manipulation was happening with about like 10, 15, 20 laps to go. William Byron was clearly fading through the field. His tires had worn out. They made a bad strategy call. They did not pit. They did not have the new tires. They stayed out on old tires, and the they were about to pay the price. But instead, what happened, Austin Dillon, Ross Chastain, they caught William Byron, and then instead of uh, trying to advance their position to pass him, they decided to create a barricade right there. You can see this is on the last lap, the barricade that they formed, but they were doing this for about 10 or so laps. They formed a barricade. They prevented drivers like Brad Keselowski and Joey Logano to get by. I think Carson Hosvar might have potentially been involved in this as well, but he did not get penalized because he was kind of staying right behind Ross Chastain, pinning Brad Keselowski to the bottom of the track as well. And uh, they refused to pass Byron, and they refused to allow other people to <laughs> get around him, uh, ensuring that Byron would uh, stay a point ahead of Christopher Bell in the uh, playoff race in order to lock himself into the championship four uh, and move on to Phoenix to compete for that championship. So that was happening. And then on the last lap or the last couple of laps, Bo Wallace decided to absolutely tank uh, his car and uh, fell back. You can see him right here on the last lap. He's getting passed by Byron and uh, he was a lap down, but he was the only car that was a lap down that was ahead of Christopher Bell, which would have allowed him to allow Christopher Bell to get that one point that Byron had ahead of him. That it means they would have been tied and then they would have gone to a tiebreaker and Bell would have had that tiebreaker due to his second place finish at Las Vegas earlier in the round of eight. And so Bubba Wallace completely fell back, allowed Bell to pass him. Bell then uh, got massively loose. It completely ruined the plan and uh, hit the wall and then decided to wall ride it after making contact with the wall. And they, uh, they penalized him during the race saying that uh, he penalizing him for a safety violation during the race and put him to the tail end of all of the cars one lap down in 22nd position. So that's what happened during the race. And now we're getting these, these penalties from NASCAR. This is what they posted on X. The numbers 1, 3, and 23 teams have been penalized for violating the NASCAR member code of conduct at Martinsville Speedway. The crew chief and spotter of each car, as well as the team executive from each organization, have been suspended for this weekend's race in Phoenix. In a subsequent post, they added this. Additionally, the teams have been assessed with the loss of 50 driver and owner points, and the drivers and owners of each car have been fined $100,000. So that is the exact same fine that Cole Custer and Stuart Haas Racing received back in 2022 when they were also penalized for race manipulation when Cole Custer and his team decided to tank it in order to uh, try and get Chase Briscoe in uh, to our to advance when they were at the Roval in 2022. So uh, they did the same fine and penalty here uh, in a post on NASCAR.com. We got a little bit more information. It says that they violated sections 4.4 B and D NASCAR member code uh, NASCAR member conduct of the rule of the rule book, uh, which include race manipulation and actions detrimental to stock car racing. It then reiterated the fine and the points penalty. Uh, you can, I'm not going to read that again because we just kind of read that. And then obviously we get the names of the crew chiefs here, Phil Surgeon, Justin Alexander, and Booty Barker. Along with their respective spotters, Brandon McReynolds, Brandon Benish, and Freddie Kraft, all suspended for the 2024 season finale at Phoenix. Additionally, team executives Tony Lunders, Keith Rodden, and Dave Rogers were also suspended for the 2024 finale at Phoenix. So uh, good on NASCAR for penalizing them. I think it is a little interesting that they decided to release this at 6 o'clock uh, during election day when they know no one is paying attention to this for the most part. Everyone is paying attention to the election results that are going to be coming in, especially here on the East Coast in about an hour. And that's pretty much what everyone is focusing on. So I think that's a little cowardly on NASCAR's part. Uh, maybe should have announced it yesterday when they normally typically do on Wednesdays, or at least they should have done it today during the day, not, not at six o'clock uh, in the evening here on the East Coast. It's clearly time for six o'clock, 5.59, six o'clock with the two posts right there. And then obviously though, I think if they're going to penalize the one, the three, and the 23, you have to penalize the 24 and the 20 because if the one and the three 
are engaging in race manipulation. Well, who are they engaging in race manipulation for? It's for the 24. The 24 is clearly the beneficiary of that race manipulation, and he's clearly involved in it. He, he can see in his rearview mirror that the one and three have created a barricade for him. Like, he's there's no way you can convince me that the 24 team was not involved in this if you are penalizing the one and the three. And similarly, you will not be able to convince me that the 20 team was not involved with the 23 absolutely tanking it so the 20 could advance. Those were It was so obvious that that was team orders, and they should have penalized both William Byron and Christopher Bell, and they should have at least gotten the same penalty that they gave out to Ross Chastain, Austin Dillon, and Bubba Wallace's team. That seems like common sense to me. So I really don't understand why they're doing this, and clearly these penalties don't even work. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad that NASCAR is penalizing them, but we're two years out from when they did this with Cole Custer and we're seeing it again. It doesn't work. A hundred, two hundred thousand dollars for these Chevy drivers. I think that's a, that, that's a drop in the bucket compared to what William Byron's going to get just getting into the final four. That would be my assumption. I don't know if we have the exact details in this. I don't think that NASCAR really releases a lot of that stuff anymore, but I would assume uh, it's worth a whole lot more than $100,000. So this penalty is, is a drop in the bucket compared to what they're getting, uh, at least what Chevy is getting rewarded for. I hope Ross, I mean, I hope Chevy pays for it. If I'm Ross Chastain or Austin Dillon, Chevy better be paying. This better not be coming out of my bank account because they did it for Chevy. Same with Bubba Wallace. Toyota better be paying that. But they shouldn't have done it anyways. I've already talked about this. I think Mark Martin is 100% right. Low integrity is the words that he used. They refused, They stopped racing because they took team orders instead. They should have raced. They should have ignored those team orders and, and marched on. Are, what are they going to do? Blackball you? Blackball you from, from Chevy? From Ford? I mean, if you're blackballed from Chevy, they're, the Chevy's going to tell Ford, this guy doesn't follow team orders, blackball him too. Are they going to blackball you out of the sport? Well, it's worth it. It's worth it, I think. I, I, that's a hard decision. Don't, don't get me wrong. That's an extremely hard decision. There's a lot of money, a lot of prestige. You're at the pinnacle of asphalt racing, especially here in the United States. Stock car racing. But Kyle Larson proves that you can find success outside of NASCAR. They banned him from the sport for a year. He went dirt racing. Brought him, brought him right back. Sat out for a year. Came right back. Won a, won a championship. Racing in the Indy 500 now. But even if you don't get a comeback, if, you, if, they, if they completely blackball you and you're, you're done, at least you have integrity. And I think that's worth more than all of the money, the fame, everything that you would get by racing in NASCAR. Well, those are my thoughts. Let me know what you guys make of this. Let me know in the comments below.